Genesis, or Beginnings, the first book of our Bible, describes the origin of the universe, humanity, the work week, marriage, human rebellion, and death. It introduces God's promise of a savior, shows the beginning of family life, agriculture and industry, languages and the division of nations, climaxing with the selection of Abraham's family as God's special channel of blessing to the world. The word generations is repeated throughout the book with 10 lists of genealogies. The first section begins, this is the generation of the heavens and the earth. Earth's earliest age, covering about 2,000 years, has three divisions, from creation to the fall, chapters 1 to 3, from the fall to the flood, chapters 4 to 8, 14, and from the flood to the Tower of Babel, chapters 8, 15 to 11, 9. This section concludes with a list of Earth's founding nations and their scattering at the plains of Shinar. Another 400 years of history follow, describing the times of the patriarchs from the call of Abram until his great-grandchildren and their families were settled in the land of Egypt. That means that Abraham is not only the man in the middle of Genesis, but also halfway through Old Testament history. In other words, it's approximately the same period from Genesis 3 to 11 as from Genesis 11 to Matthew. So although the early chapters are pivotal, obviously God is moving quickly through these early events. He tells the creation of the whole universe in a few verses, then uses the rest of the Old Testament to tell the story of one man and his family. Obviously, people are much more important than things, and salvation far more vital than creation. According to Hebrews 1, the universe is just a temporary stage on which to enact God's amazing love story. Genesis is primarily the story of God's dealings with seven men and their families. It has been suggested they represent distinctive traits of the life of faith. Adam, a supernatural design. Enoch, supernatural fellowship. Noah, supernatural preservation. Abram, a supernatural call. Isaac, a supernatural birth. Jacob, supernatural care. And Joseph, a supernatural purpose. The three primary names of God, Elohim, Jehovah, and Adonai, are introduced in Genesis, as well as the five most important of God's compound names. And of the eight great covenants, four are found here, the Edenic, Adamic, Noahic, and Abrahamic covenants. The others, the Mosaic, Israelitish, Davidic, and New Covenants, are based substantially on the first four. Students will note the vital distinction between the unilateral and bilateral covenants of Scripture. Genesis is quoted more than 60 times in about half the New Testament books. Every part of Genesis is there ascribed to Moses and is treated by the New Testament writers as historically accurate. Since Genesis is the book of beginnings, the New Testament writers regularly cite the events and characters in the book as prototypes, precedents, and proofs of gospel truth. It's essential to understand these historic details if we hope to understand the New Testament. Paul had such confidence in Genesis that he based his argument for salvation by grace apart from law on the sequence of events in Abraham's life. See Romans 4.10. And since Jesus trusted this book, you can too. And that's our scripture snapshot of the book of Genesis.